Hello, this is ECG case number 14. Should be a pretty quick and easy case to go over. Um, here's the uh, ECG case. It's a 21-year-old male that's complaining of chest pain. Now, that doesn't give you a whole lot of information. You don't have anything about their the rest of their presentation or their medical history. But let's just take at it, a look at it just from based on the ECG alone. All right, so looking at the CKG, we're going to start out by interpreting the rate and rhythm. And the rate looks like it might be a little bit fast. Uh, if you do your 300 box method, you can see it's a, almost about 100 beats per minute. And the rhythm itself looks probably sinus. We see P waves. Uh, they're pretty much upright in all the limb leads over here and negative in AVR. Okay, and that to be a sinus rhythm. It must be true that they are upright in every limb lead except for AVR. They should be negative. Um, and you see a P wave with every QRS complex. So we can call this a sinus rhythm, either normal sinus rhythm or sinus tachycardia. If it was, in fact, greater than 100 beats per minute, obviously, uh, this would be sinus tachycardia, which it looks to be. Uh, looking further, looking at the axis, uh, the ECG axis we see, uh, leads 1, 2, and 3 are all positive, and I've, I've said before that that's a quick and easy way to say that our ECG axis is normal, okay? The other way would be the quadrant method. If you're familiar that, with that, you would look at lead 1 and AVF, and you'd see that both of them are positive. So we do, in fact, have a normal QRS axis. Looking further now, we're going to start looking at the precordial axis. The precordial axis looks to be normal as well. You have a normal R wave progression or transition, you go from almost no R wave in V1, so there's almost no R wave there, it's all negative, and then in V6 it's almost all positive, that's the way it should be, and your transition should occur between V3 and V4, which it does. Alright, so so far everything looks normal. Now we're going to look for, at, for ST changes, uh, the ST segment and T wave, and we do see some, okay, we see some uh, ST elevation in V3, and V4, V5, maybe a little bit in V6, as well as maybe a little bit in lead 1, AVL, and that's pretty much all I see. So we do see a lot of it, and this could be a myocardial infarction pattern, so we have to be concerned. So now we start looking at other things, along with actually being you know, on the call and with the patient, we'd obviously get some more information from the patient, you know, an OPQRST, we get a good sample history, uh, and, and we'd hopefully uh, be able to determine more uh, what's going on based on their presentation. But looking at the ECG, we're going to look for some other things. Uh, is any of this ST elevation convex? Because if, if you see convex ST elevation, for all intents and purposes, you need to right away say, okay, it's probably an MI. And if you're not familiar with what that is, let me just show you real quick. So uh, if this was your P, Q, R, all right. Now convex ST elevation would be like that. Concave ST elevation is more like that, okay? So what you would do is draw a straight line from the J point to the top of the T wave, and if your ST segment falls below that, that's concave, concave, where convex is above that line, okay? This is always bad. There's some, some instances where it might be benign, but for the most part, let's just always think of it as bad, where concave is usually not bad, but may still be bad. So all your mimics, basically, have this concave ST elevation. All right, so going back to this now. So do we see any convex ST elevation? All of it looks to be pretty concave, okay? So if you drew that straight line, that didn't really hit the points, but it is below the straight line. And that holds true pretty much all throughout this EKG. Um, with a 21-year-old male, you have to be concerned about early repolarization, pericarditis, drug use, all that stuff. Uh, with this 12 lead EKG, um, I'm looking at the precordial leads right now, and I'm noticing a few things that indicate early repolarization. For one, you have a very short QT interval, okay? 
and you have normal R wave progression. If you have a very tall R wave in V4, it's much more indicative of early repolarization or acute pericarditis. Acute pericarditis and early repolarization share a lot of the same findings. And as far as you know, we're concerned pre-hospitally, it might not matter too much whether it's early repol or pericarditis as long as you know that it's not a STEMI, which this is not. Okay, and we're going to look even further and kind of find some more uh, reasons why we could say it's not a STEMI. We don't have any reciprocal changes. There's not really any ST elevation anywhere. Okay, now a lot of people look for PR segment depression with acute pericarditis. Uh, and you do have some PR segment depression. You can see it in V3. Okay, and you can see it in some of the other light leads like V4. You do have PR segment depression. And what that does is it makes the ST segment look a little bit more elevated than it actually is. That's why we try to compare the SC segment to the TP segment. This is your TP segment, if you look at V3, for, to be the isoelectric line. But remember that, that PR depression is not always present with per acute pericarditis, and it could be present with a, a myocardial infarction. It could be atrial ischemia. So that's not really a good finding to determine whether uh, per acute pericarditis exists or not. And the global ST elevation rule... A lot of people believe that you have to have ST elevation in every single lead to have acute pericarditis. That's not true. Um, sometimes you don't see it in quite a few leads, and sometimes you'll even have a little bit of ST depression in V1, which it almost looks like we have there. Um, other findings that, uh, that uh, are common with acute pericarditis, something like spotic sign, okay, spotic sign. I've learned of this very recently. Oops. Spotix sign. Okay, and what Spotix is, is something that Dr. Emil Matu has been talking about recently. And what you get is the entire line from the, the beginning of your, let's say your J point to the beginning of the QRS goes in a downward angle. Okay, downward angle. And then you come back up and you keep getting that pattern over and over and over again. And it is highly indicative of acute pericarditis. It's very common with acute pericarditis. And you do not see that with acute myocardial infarction. So we do see it very well in V3 and in V4, uh, spotic sign. And that's why I wanted to show this case because I've been looking for this spotic sign ever since Dr. Matu started talking about it. And I finally found one. This is a confirmed uh, acute pericarditis EKG. Um, there's other things on it that uh, we've talked about in previous 12 lead uh, reviews uh, with acute pericarditis and, and early repolarization. But I just wanted to mention that spotic sign uh, is something that you could start looking for with acute pericarditis. It's not really a zebra like some people might call uh, different findings that us EKG nerds like to look for. But you, you definitely see it here, you know, in V3 and V4. It kind of just, and maybe you've seen it before and just never really knew that it had its na own name. Um, it's called spotic sign. So from the end of the QRS complex to the beginning of the next QRS complex, you see a downward kind of everything kind of just flows in that downward, uh, you know, angle. Okay. Now I'm just drawing lines. Hold on. All right. So spotic sign is something for you to start looking for. And that's pretty much uh, ECG case number 14. Uh, the resource. I'd like to give uh, for you to learn more about EKGs is 12 lead ECG challenge, the app for iPhone. I don't know if it's on Android yet, but it's a really good app. Um, Limmer Creative Ventures got with Tom Boothelay from EMS 12 lead and created this app. And it's really easy to use. You just start picking EKGs that you want to look through. And, you know, once you feel like you've mastered it, you won't see that EKG anymore. He's got tons of them on there. Some I know I've sent him that are really good examples that he's put on there. And you, it just challenges you to interpret the EKG. And he gives you a little of information with each one uh, as far as the presentation. And then he gives you a good interpretation of what you should be looking for. So check that out. It's pretty cheap uh, by Limmer Creative Ventures, uh, Tom Boothelay's 12 Lead ECG Challenge app. And if you have any questions or you want to send me any EKGs or talk EKG with me, I'm always more than welcome to take an email. Send it to paramedicine101 at gmail.com. All right, until next time, uh, take care, and I hope you enjoyed this ECG case. Have a good one.